The following are excerpts from several of the Death to Diabetes DVDs and audio CDs. Now, if you happen to like some of the information on these video clips and you would like to obtain the entire video, then you can purchase one of the DVDs or audio CDs from my website, deathtodiabetes.com. However, if you are a diabetic, I would recommend that you start with the book first and then follow up with one of the DVDs or CDs. Now, in terms of which DVDs or CDs to select, personally, I would probably start with the Meet and Reverse Type 2 Diabetes in 10 Steps. And if you wanted to see me in action, then you could try one of the live DVDs. And I was, uh, I was 80, about 80, 85 pounds heavier than I am right now, but I carried it well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I felt I was a little chunky. And my daughter said, no, Dad, you passed chunky 35 pounds ago. <laughs> The first thing I thought about when I thought I was dead, my mother, she goes, did you think about me? I said, no. <laughs> did, did you think about your daughter? I said, no. She goes, and what did you think about? I said, well, what popped in my head for, for some strange reason was, I won't have to pay the electric bill this month. <laughs> <laughs> my mother just shook her head. The other thing I'll mention besides the nutritional part of the a wellness strategy, there, there are actually seven strategies, but I, I'm only going to talk about two. The other one I'm going to mention is exercise. Everybody knows that exercise is important. I hate exercise. I hate exercise. Anybody here raise your hand say you love exercise. I want somebody raise your hand. I want to talk to you. <laughs> I would say on average, I was probably at the beginning spending an extra two, three thousand dollars a month, maybe more now if I, if I go back and do the numbers on the, um, the insulin, because they did pay for some of it, but they wouldn't pay for all my test strips because I was testing my blood eight times a day and they would only pay for three. Doesn't that tell you something? They don't want you to get well. But I learned how to play their game. Because in America, it's all about the money. So I told the test strip people, I love your test strips. But I'm going to pull them, little man. And they're so expensive. I'm going to use and buy these others, which cost a little less. You know what they did? They sent me some free test strips. I said, oh, did the same thing with the other company. <laughs> and my mother, she has a look. And my mother's a legend. And when she gives you the look, you just kind of go along with the program or you're going to peel yourself off the wall. <laughs> Now, <laughs> and again, because people say, Dwayne, you're a grown man. I say, yeah, but you don't understand. My mother, see, when I was growing up, my mother was a living legend. All the kids in the neighborhood, when my mother came running, they ran before I did. And I knew my mother was coming because you're on a ball field. If the people in the outfield start jumping over the fence, I knew that she was coming down the street. And my mother, she's only that big. But my mother could leap and rip a branch out of a tree. And you became part of that tree. <laughs> so when you grow up <laughs> with that type of experience, uh, you learn you don't say no to my mother. You go along with the program. And again, I thought I only had two or three weeks of this, and she'll be going back home. 
And the neurosurgeon came in, yeah, Mr. McCauley, uh, we hear that you're going to be leaving and da da da. Well, uh, we, we, we just want to let you know that uh, you can save $250 if we go ahead and remove your legs today. <laughs> and proceeded to start shopping for broccoli, Brussels sprouts, spinach, every food that I hate. <laughs> uh, and my daughter said, well, Dad, why, why are you going to go back to the original dosage if you're already in the normal range? Shouldn't you be going the other way? And, uh, and I'm thinking, dang, she's pretty smart. <laughs> and I said, ooh, whose daughter is she? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, smart little girl. And, uh, oh, oh, yeah, I guess I should. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is the book. They said it could not be produced. And the publisher that said it couldn't happen turned around and said, Dwayne, could we have a DVD? Back live with the Heart Show. Uh, on the lines, Dwayne McCullen, uh, author of the great book, which I read, uh, Death to Diabetes. And, no, buy the book. you got to be kidding, Dwayne. Yeah, but they can go to the... My friend Rod Jones would, would die if he hears this interview. No, no, you buy the book. The book is a great book, Death to Diabetes. And, and by the way, please buy the book. Don't ever say, please, don't ever say don't buy the book. Go to the website, yes, but get the book. People want to uh, want to have it in their hands. They want to read it. It's a lengthy book, I might say, right. but very well written. Okay, so let's do that. Yep. Death to diabetes.com yep. and uh, get the book. All right, thanks so much. Here's what's coming up for the second hour of Wake Up Rochester on this Monday morning. Will the DVD bubble kill the multiplex at 612? Steven Soderbergh turns a new experimental film into an experimental movie release. Then at 622, death to diabetes. An ex-diabetic beat the life-threatening disease and tells us how you can too. And high-tech health care may be the norm, but at 636, all natural flu fighters that take the confusion out of cold remedies it's now 6.05. This is Wake Up Rochester on Channel 8 News. Well, he survived a life-threatening disease, and he's here to tell his story. Next, a local author says death to diabetes and how you can fight the disease, too. It's 6.19. You're watching Wake Up Rochester on Channel 8. Only uh, 326, which is still as high, obviously, but it was over 100 points down from uh, the previous readings that I had following the hospital's diet plan. I was so excited. I said, whoa. I called the, the hospital. I called the doctor. Yeah, Dwayne, uh, yeah, that's an anomaly. I said, oh. Okay, it's an anomaly. Hmm. Okay, so what do engineers do? when they face an anomaly. In the lab, uh, we test, exactly. We test the hypothesis. I got one data point. And I felt I had nothing to lose because they still wanted to cut off my legs. And I decided, well, let me just try this Brussels sprouts again. Uh, yeah. And I tried it for lunch and after lunch and my blood glucose level dropped not 100 points, maybe about 55, 56 points. I went, whoa, I, I, I was excited. I called the doctor, got two data points. He goes, Dwayne, are you listening to me? I need you to understand something, Dwayne. You're in denial. <laughs> and most diabetics are in denial of their disease. And I'm trying to help you. Whatever you read, you did it incorrectly. Go back to the original program. And so when I got off the phone, my mother asked what the doctor say. Now, <laughs> I <laughs> wanted to stay alive. <laughs> 
So I said, yeah, mom, well, the doctor said, yeah, just, you know, follow the program. I didn't tell her which program. And I felt, again, I had nothing to lose, and I, and I, I continued to eat the Brussels sprouts um, for the next seven days.